Argo Land, often called a lost continent, was once a hypothesized microcontinental landmass that separated from the northwestern margin of Gondwana, specifically what is now Australia, approximately 155 million years ago. In recent years, this lost microcontinent has been proven beyond a doubt, and this fascinating geological fragment is central to our understanding of plate tectonics because it offers insights into the breakup of supercontinents, the movement of tectonic plates, and the formation of Southeast Asia's geological landscape. Unlike traditional continents that remain intact, Argo Land became fragmented, contributing to a complex geological puzzle that researchers have only recently begun to piece together. Now, Argo Land is old, very old. It contains rocks that date back over a billion years. Detrital zircon studies reveal that parts of Argo Land contain zircons from the Mesoproterozoic era, specifically 1.25 billion to 900 million years ago indicating that these rocks were already part of Earth's crust long before Argo Land separated from Gondwana in the late Jurassic period. As such, while Argo Land itself rifted away as an independent landmass around 155 million years ago, the crustal material that formed it had a deep geological history. This ancient foundation is preserved today in the fragmented Argo Land remnants across Southeast Asia, where their age and mineral composition link them to Australia's ancient cratonic rocks. Now this is big news. Argo Land is likely enriched in minerals, and if targeted effectively, these resources could significantly impact the economies of the countries hosting Argo Land fragments within their crust. Now, as hinted above, fragments of this ancient land are found in several countries today. These regions host dispersed remnants of Argo Land, now embedded within Southeast Asia's complex tectonic structure. Argo Land's deconstruction is rooted in the tectonic dynamics of the supercontinent Gondwana. By the late Jurassic period, tectonic forces driven by mantle convection and other processes began to pull parts of Gondwana apart. This rifting activity eventually led to the breakup of the supercontinent, creating the Indian Ocean and other oceanic expanses that separate the continents today. So Argo Land's separation from the northwest of Western Australia began around 155 million years ago forming the Argo Abyssal Plain, an area of oceanic crust that emerged as a gap between Australia and the newly rifting landmass. This plain, characterised by deep oceanic sediment and magnetic anomalies, served as a geological boundary and a cradle for new oceanic crust. Over time, Argo land drifted northward towards Southeast Asia, where it fragmented into smaller landmasses. Much of Argo land's material is thought to have accreted onto the Sunda Plate, which underlies much of Indonesia and Malaysia. The collision and subduction processes here significantly contributed to the complex tectonic fabric of the Sunda Plate. Along with this, some sections of it ended up within areas now considered part of the Indian Plate, specifically in regions such as the Eastern Himalayas. A key piece of Argoland, the Longza Block, is now located in the Eastern Tethian Himalayas. This block bears Triassic sediments and Jurassic magmatic evidence linking it to the Northwest Australian margin indicating it was part of Argo Land's initial rifting. The Longza Block's tectonic journey shows it collided with the Eurasian margin around 60 million years ago, during the early phases of the India-Asia collision. This discovery illustrates how fragments of Argo Land reached far north, contributing to the Himalayan orogeny. So how did we know that Argo Land existed before it was definitively identified? While its discovery provides further support for the theory of plate tectonics and our understanding of continental drift, the idea of Argo Land first emerged in the 1970s, when geologists reconstructed Gondwana's breakup and noted a potential missing landmass. The existence of it was initially inferred through indirect evidence, long before scientists had definitive geological proof. Early tectonic plate reconstruction models hinted at a missing landmass that could explain various geological features and anomalies found in the Indian Ocean and the crustal structure of northwestern Australia. This missing piece was proposed to account for the origin of certain continental fragments in Southeast Asia that appeared to have separated from Gondwana but did not fit directly into the Eurasian tectonic structure. The most compelling initial evidence came from marine magnetic anomalies identified in the Argo Abyssal Plain, which showed patterns consistent with seafloor spreading. These anomalies, which scientists dated back to the Jurassic period, indicated that oceanic crust was actively forming between Australia and a landmass that had since drifted away. In addition to magnetic evidence, paleomagnetic data showed that rocks in certain Southeast Asian regions 
specifically within Myanmar and the Eastern Himalayas, had originated from latitudes near Gondwana, implying that these fragments must have broken away from Australia. Further support for Argoland's existence came from fossil records and sedimentary layers found in Southeast Asia, which closely resembled those on the Australian continental shelf. Geological studies of Triassic and Jurassic rocks, including deposits of volcanic and sedimentary material, aligned with the Gondwanan origin, providing clues that these Southeast Asian fragments were once part of Argoland. It wasn't until detailed studies in the late 20th and early 21st century that researchers could substantiate this hypothesis. By examining the geological features in the Argo Abyssal Plain and comparing them with rock samples from regions like Indonesia, Myanmar, and the Longza Block within the Tethian Himalayas, researchers gathered evidence supporting the existence of Argoland. Scientists identified distinct similarities that corroborated the Argoland hypothesis. As mentioned before, one breakthrough came with studies on detrital zircon, a mineral that can indicate the age and origin of rock formations. Zircon samples from parts of Southeast Asia matched those found in Northwestern Australia, reinforcing the theory that these regions shared a common origin. Another significant discovery occurred when researchers mapped the Argo Abyssal Plains magnetic anomalies in greater detail. They could trace the timing and direction of tectonic plate movements, which pointed to a northward drift of Argo land fragments. This breakthrough led to the recognition that Argo land, while fragmented, had accreted to at least two tectonic plates over millions of years. Today, Argo land no longer exists as a single cohesive landmass. The Longza block in the Himalayas, regions in Myanmar, Sumatra, Sulawesi, and Borneo, and parts of Java contain geological fragments of Argo land. These remnants are deeply embedded within the tectonically complex accretionary origins of the Sunda and Burma plates. On geological maps, we have outcrops of Jurassic rocks and even older rocks in areas that studies have shown to be associated with Argo land. We have Jurassic rocks in the Woyla Ark and Cretaceous rocks in the large region to the east of it. Today's sponsor is Odoo, an all-in-one management software that provides business owners with a suite of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of their business. The Odoo Website Builder is a powerful tool that makes designing a website quick, easy and efficient. And the best part, Odoo is completely free for your first app. With unlimited hosting, support and a free personalised domain for the first year, you get everything you need to get started at no cost. Now let's talk about what makes Odoo's Website Builder stand out. Odoo's intuitive drag and drop system makes it easy to structure your site without needing any technical skills. You can fully customise every block, choose from a variety of templates, and place elements like text, images, or buttons exactly where you want them. Want to add visuals? No problem. You can easily import images or videos directly from your computer or use Odoo's built-in Unsplash library for high-quality, royalty-free content. Customise your visuals with fixed or animated shapes for a polished professional look. Add dynamic animations, adjust the speed, and even tweak the typography with Google Fonts to give your site a unique branded feel. You can also play with colour palettes and effects. Odoo's Website Builder really lets you create a site that reflects your business, making it look as professional as possible without any hassle. So if you're ready to design a beautiful functional website that's uniquely yours, give Odoo a try. Click the link in the description to get started for free and see how Odoo can help you build your dream website. Thank you so much to Odoo for sponsoring this video. While we can't reconstruct Argo land in exact detail, geologists have been able to infer a general picture of its characteristics. Argo land was likely an archipelago of continental fragments and microcontinental terrains, rather than a singular unified landmass. Its geological profile suggests a mix of sedimentary and volcanic rock formations, similar to the northwestern Australian margin from which it originated. This hypothetical archipelago, often termed the Argopelago, likely included various rock types such as volcanic seals, sandstones and carbonates from shallow marine environments, indicating a landscape that could have supported diverse ecosystems. Geochemical analysis of Argoland-related rocks in Southeast Asia also hint at an environment shaped by both continental and oceanic influences. With sedimentary deposits that point to alternating periods of submergence and emergence as Argoland drifted northward, Argoland's complex tectonic history suggests that it might host mineral deposits. But considering its former position on the northwestern area of Australia and its ancient geological past, it's also likely that mineral deposits exist from past geological events. The rifting process that separated Argoland from Gondwana likely generated hydrothermal activity, 
which, along with the volcanic and sedimentary deposits from its Gondwanan origins, may have enriched its crust with minerals. Regions in Myanmar, Sumatra and Borneo that host fragments of Argo land show geological signs of past hydrothermal systems and tectonic deformation, suggesting the potential for mineral wealth. Although Argo land's fragments are highly deformed, the mineral potential of these regions remains promising. Further exploration could uncover economically viable mineral deposits, particularly in the heavily mineralized orogenic belts of Southeast Asia. There are numerous studies that highlight the geological journey and discovery of Argo land. I've linked the ones used to construct this video in the description below for further reading. One last thing worth mentioning is the potential role Argo land played in the formation of the Lake Toba supervolcano. While it's not directly related to its formation, it's possible that it played a role in creating it. If you'd like to see a separate video on why this might be the case, leave a comment below or click the like button to let me know. It's possible that crustal thickening associated with the accretion of Argo land led to the conditions necessary to produce this massive supervolcano in this region. So Argo land is an extraordinary example of a lost microcontinent that offers a unique glimpse into Earth's tectonic history. From its rifting from Gondwana, inferred existence through indirect evidence, initial discovery and current fragmented state across Southeast Asia, Argoland's discovery is a fascinating journey. Though Argoland no longer exists as a single landmass, its geological fingerprints are scattered across Southeast Asia, carrying with them the potential for valuable mineral deposits that could shape the economies of the regions where its fragments reside. I hope you found this topic to be as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.